Hey, what's up everybody? This is Sinan here, and today I'm going to be showing you a brand new cool software that I just came across. It's called FlowLab. And what it is, is a 2D game development game developing software where you can create your own 2D games for the iPhone. And it's really, really cool because it's all in browser, which means you don't have to download anything. Now this, this tutorial will be for the beginner level, and it will be uh, about 10 minutes long. So let's see how fast we can make a game. So I'm going to start the timer, and I'm going to try to teach you how to make a 2D basic 2D game with a start, a finish, and uh, an objective in less than 15 minutes. Okay, guys, let's begin. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to flowlab.io. Now this is a, again, this is a website, and iPhone games right in your browser, so you don't have to download anything. The only thing you may have to do is you're going to have to go up here, and it says my games here because I'm already logged in. But we're going to have to create and click on my games and we're going to start off with a new game. We're going to go ahead and click on new game. And we are not going to do the actual tutorial. We're going to go and start a brand new game. So there's three different layers. There's a game world, user interface, and background. So we're going to start with the background. Now what the background is, it's not actually in the world, but it's just what's behind the world. So we're going to go ahead and create ourselves a, a sky box. So we're going to click on the bucket tool, click on a color that we want. And I'm going to just go ahead and create a nice blue box and hit OK. And we're going to name this Sky. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and clone this so that the entire the entire game background is a blue sky. And we're going to have just as a nice background beforehand. We're, we're going to have a character be collecting a coin and having a little sound go off and having a restarting of the game after this. So after you're done cloning this, um, this could take a couple minutes, but after, that's the only thing I don't like about this, if there's an easy way just to do the whole thing, but to make the whole canvas blue, but that's okay. So we're almost done here. After this, we're going to click on done cloning, and we're going to go into the game mode. And when we're, when we're in the game mode, we're going to create a ground, a ground for our character to run on. So we're going to go to Done Cloning, Layer, Game World. Now we're going to click on a little piece in the bottom left hand corner and click on Create. Now we're going to click on the photo right here where it says Click to Edit. We're going to click on this. We're then going to click on the Bucket tool and make it a nice just brown basic block for the ground. Click OK. Now we're going to name this Ground. And we're going to, oops, sorry about that. Ground. We're going to name this dirt click OK and we're going to be duplicating this so that we can clone it. So we're going to click on clone and we're going to create ourselves a nice ground for our character to run on. There we go. Now I'm going to create a, a, a barrier up on both sides so that the character cannot fall off the world which means that here I'll show you an example right now. I'm going to go ahead and click on done cloning and when the character gets in the world, he's going to fall off the world right here. So what we want it to happen is we want him to stay in the world. So we're going to put different blocks around it so it prevents him from leaving the world. We're going to go ahead and click on Done Cloning. And now we're going to create the character. In order to save time, we're going to click on Create. And we're going to use a already made, pre-made 2D asset. And an asset is where it's it's something that you can use that's already pre-made and for your game. So we're going to click on Browse. And instead of My Sprites, we're going to go to Tutorial, where this little guy resides. We're going to go ahead and click on OK. So we're going to use him for today. And let's name him the type, which is he's a character. That's not right how I spell that, but OK. Akshay. And that's his name. That's a funny line. Why not call him Akshay? And we're going to go ahead and click on Make him Movable and Affected by Gravity. So what that does is it makes it movable and affected by gravity. <laughs> so kind of self-explanatory. So what we're going to do is we're going to behaviors. Now this is the behaviors. This is where we can really learn the if-then conceptual fundamentals in order for you to really understand the basis of programming. What we're going to do here is we're going to be using a behavior bundle, which is a pre-made bundle for running and jumping. We'll go into depth on how to make this later on in, in our videos. So we're going to later on probably next video or another video. We're going to click on OK. So now we're going to click on play and let's see if we use the arrow keys. Yep, you can move around. You can jump around and 
Notice, he can't fall off the world. That's a good thing. So now we have a little guy running around. Now let's create an objective. Let's have some coins. So I'm going to click on here, create, and I'm going to make a just a bright yellow. Well, actually, I'm going to use a tutorial sprite. I'm going to use a coin. And then I'm going to customize this coin just a bit. Um, and I'm going to put a little, make this a little black here. And you can kind of do whatever you want. Just, just to make it yours. I'm going to make this little cool design here I have. And okay, and so you can really do whatever you want. I'm just trying to distinguish it. So it looks like a little bug. I don't know. It's okay. And um, so now we have like a little, our little coin. I'm gonna name this pick up, pick up, and name it coin. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and. I really don't like that design, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go back to the tutorial, tutorial coin just for right now. I don't have time to make it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it not movable and it's not gonna be affected by gravity. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on behaviors, and this is where it becomes really important. So what do you want this to do? We want the coin to disappear when the character hits it. We want it to make a little noise, and we want it to restart the game because the game is over once you collect all the coins. But for right now, let's go ahead and do this. We're going to click on Collision. And we're going to go ahead and click on when it collide, when the coin collides with the character. Akshay. We want it to do what? We want it to, dis to destroy or self-destruct. So these are the different um, components that they have. And we're going to click on Destroy. And what we're going to do is we are going to drag these two together. So now that when the character hits the coin, it's going to destroy itself. Let's check on time. Okay, we got 8 minutes. We can do this. We can click on play and we can run and there we go. It destroys the coin. But we want a little noise to come out of it right before it gets destroyed. So we're going to click on a sound and we're going to go ahead and connect. Whenever it hits the coin, it's going to play a little sound. So you can make your own URL, uh, mp3 URL. You can put the URL right there. Or I'm just going to make a little. Oopsie, sorry about that. That was a weird. How about this one? Yeah, that sounds good. And we're going to make it put it on loop so that, or, yeah, I'll we'll put it on loop and click OK. So now what? There we go. So now when we hit the coin, it makes that noise. Actually, no. Let's take it off loop. Now when we hit the coin, it should make that noise. It works. There we go. So now we have a little sound. Let's go ahead and pick a different sound. I really don't like that sound. There we go. Now let's hit play. And let's... There we go. Makes a little sound. There we go. So now we basically have created a game where you pick up the coins and it makes a song. So now, what do we need to do next? We need to make it so that when it hits the coin, it restarts the game. So what we're going to do next is we're going to have it so that after it destroys it, it restarts the game. So we're going to go to Game Flow. And click on restart game and we're going to attach the restart game tab to the destroy tab and now if we click on play it restarts the game as soon as the coin has been picked up so now we have ourselves a basic 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 game so let's want, let's create um, a little like danger area so let's go ahead and create um, kind of like an enemy so let's use a tutorial enemy, let's just use this little fly. And we're going to name him uh, enemy and I'm going to name him fly. Check the time. Six minutes, we're good. We'll click on behaviors. And when we're going to go to behavior bundles, and I'll go into this game uh, later, but we're going to make this dangerous. So that whenever he gets close to it, it'll say, you can't touch this. So let's try it. Oops. Let's, let's uh, move the enemy so that, to move it, you just click and drag it. So now, now let's try it. Let's click on play. We can try the entire game itself. There we go. Now you can't touch the fly. So let's let's position the fly so where you have to like jump over it 
in order to get to the coin. So we're going to move the coin up here, and we're going to click on play. Oopsie. So click the restart, and I'll restart the game. So we need to actually beat our own game. So let's put the coin a little bit down further. There. Let's put the coin over here, and let's put the fly right there. There we go. Now let's try that. Make it a little easier. Boom. There we go. So now what we're going to do, finally, is we're going to create it so that it says you win after the coin is picked up. So we'll go behaviors. I'm actually going to delete the restart, or we're actually going to take off this connecting from the once it gets destroyed to an actual game flow or, or uh, GUI. So we're going to have it alert us of something. So we're going to drag the alert over here. And so what an alert does is it shows um, some text in order for you to um, click it or interact with the text so that it can do something else. So we're going to say hello, uh, and then we'll just, we'll just say this, you win, you win. Okay, and let's make um, that looks good, and you can change all the colors and stuff. But let's just make it click. After you click it, it should restart the game. So let's go ahead and click OK and try it out. Mm, oops. So if we click that, we can restart the game. So we lost. I mean, we got the. That was a little weird. We, we picked up the coin, but it looks like we did not go to the. Uh, it did not show the alert. Which is a little bit confusing. So maybe when the sound effect is done, it'll let's try that. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes the game logic is a little bit funky, but other than that. Yeah. Hmm, let me think. So now this is the problem solving aspect of it. So we're gonna really figure out what what it is that we're trying to do here. Alright, so we got three minutes left on the timer. So let's just go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and Move the alert over here. It's just going to directly to that. Now let's just try that real quick. Come on. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I'm crunch for, crunch for time. So it looks like this one got bypassed, which means that what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to... Um, let's go ahead and delete this one. And we'll I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Um, but let's go ahead and put this back right here. And let, let us go ahead and hit on the character, and we're going to go to behaviors of the character. And we're going to make it what it says when it collides with the coin. Uh, the pickup, which is the coin. It's going to show an alert. And let's just do that. And let's see if that works. So now... Hmm... Oh, I know why. Oh, I have to... Okay, so what you need to do next time is you need to make sure that the game flow is before the restarting of the game. So, um, that is it, guys. So, next time I'll show you how to do that so you can see how to do that. So, let's go back to our original game. So, we got ourselves a little Akshay running around, clicking on little flies, and we got ourselves a simple, simple game. Teaching the fundamental basics to pretty much all ages. From, you know, I could... I've taught this to... My sister, who is very, very young, to my grandparents, who have have been able to pick this up. So anybody can really learn this. That's why I love this. So thanks, guys, for listening and watching, and I will see you in the next one. See you guys.